Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Thank you, Father, for all that you're doing in our lives through your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we worship you, Lord, for the kingdom and the power and the glory belongs to you. Thank you, Lord, that you have called us to be, be partakers of your power. And I thank you for all that you're doing in our lives and all that you have planned for us. Yeah. And as we pray for this uh, today's meeting, I pray for all those who are joining in to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I pray that the charisms will get powerfully activated in each one of them. Praying that signs, wonders, and miracles will break out in them and in the members of the family. And I pray for the, those who are being persecuted, Lord, especially praying for uh, Chhattisgarh, Lord. I pray for each one of them. I pray that you strengthen them with your strength. And I also pray for those who are persecuting. Grant each one of them the grace of conversion. So let's all pray together. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Cover us with the blood of your Son. Cover us with, cover the, us with the blood of your Son. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. We lay a wall of fire around us. Build a, build a wall of fire Lord. around us. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly, Heavenly Father, in the name Lord of Jesus. Jesus. Let your angels encamp around us a day and night. Let your, Let angel your angels encamp around us day and night. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit we welcome you. Teach us and guide us. Teach us and, us and guide us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So we, we have been learning about uh, the various charisms and we have been learning about the gifts of miracles since uh, two to three days. And there's one thing I just I had forgotten to speak, one thing about the gifts of healing. So I just want to share it to you. As we have read in the scripture that uh, the word says gifts of healing. So we learned that there are various kinds of uh, gifts of healing. And then we learned there are various ways of administration of the gifts of healing. But then there is another uh, angle also, and that is, uh, you know, some people anointed for specific type of healing. Some are specially anointed for specific type of healing. So some maybe when they pray, the tumors will vanish more. That that the miracle they see more. Some are connected with bones, you know. So when they pray, that uh, orthopedic miracles happen. Uh, when they pray. So like that, uh, there are uh, various kinds of healing also in this direction. So um, uh, the, the, the manifestation of the gifts of healing can differ from people to people. Some people are very good uh, when, they, when, when, they, when they pray for cancer patients, cancer patients get healed. And one thing I have seen there are some people who love to pray for cancer patients. That is a sign they have been called to pray in that direction. Same thing with intercessors also. There are certain areas they love to pray. There are certain areas like, you know, some people pray for orphans, some people pray for couples. They love to pray. When they hear about it, immediately something jumps within them to pray. So like intercessors are also called to pray for certain areas. If we specialize in certain areas, in the same way, the gifts of healing also, sometimes we are called to be specialized in certain areas. As I was sharing many times about Brother Sabu Arthurti, he is anointed, but more miracles happen orthopedically. Orthopedic miracles happen. Connected with the bones, uh, the miracles happen. Today morning, I had met him. Mm. Uh, he, he has come for a convention about 10-15 uh, kilometers from Chalakudi. So I had gone, I had not met him since long. So I had just gone and met him and we just prayed and came, I just came back. So he's 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 a lot of miracles connected with bones, you know. Yeah. So that is how the sometimes the anointing can be some specialized anointing, healing anointing. Some are good when they pray, the paralyzed the paralyzed, paralyzed people can get up and walk. Hmm. So that is why uh, the, the, there are different streams, you know. So now in the beginning, 
It's not necessary to know what kind of healing I'm having. It's not necessary. Now I get a lot of messages, brother, can you tell me what kind of healing I've got? That, that's not the way. You know? The way is we pray for everybody who is sick. All kind of sickness. And as we pray that we will come to know, as the results come in, uh, we come to know that where the, the, the leading, leading is there. In what way we are specialized, you know, for the healing. So there, there is there, there is a gifting and there is a kind of gifting in this gifts of healing in this direction. Where we are specialized to pray for certain things. Mm. Like you go to counselors also, there also there are various kinds of counseling gifts. Some counselors, when they pray for you, they they will be seeing a lot of inner rules in you. Other than that, they may not see anything. Some counselors you go, they they they'll be able to tell you something, some bondages in your life. So they're all you know, they're all different, you know? And some are specialized in certain things. So that 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 thing we have to keep it in our mind. So now we are going to look into a beautiful subject that is called stewarding the charisms. Praying for the charism is one thing, receiving the charism is another thing, and stewarding the charisms. We are called to steward it. We God, it doesn't belong to us. It has been given to us and we have to steward it in wisdom and humility. So we'll see a few scriptures. One very important. See, first thing we have to remember, the charisms are not toys. They are all arsenals. Weapons of the kingdom of God. So because they are not toys, we, we have to handle it with maturity. It's, it's a gun and a plastic gun is different. You know? If you have a plastic, if your children have a plastic gun, they can throw it here, do that, anything they can do with it. But if it's a real gun, we, we have to be sure how, we, how to handle it. So in the same way, the charisms have to be stewarded. It belongs to the kingdom of God. It belongs to God and it has to be properly stewarded. And the charisms are not to show off, you know. It's for a showdown against the powers of darkness. The purpose is, it's a showdown against the powers of darkness. We remember the story about a lady whose body had become bent. And Jesus was there and Jesus said, since 18 years, Satan has bound her. The spirit of sickness has bound her. So it was not, it was not a show of that. It was a showdown. That there was an encounter and then she was delivered and healed. When you look into the life of Moses, when they were in Egypt, it would have been impossible for Moses to bring out all of them without these charisms. Because the Pharaoh was the one of the most powerful king at that time. So it was impossible humanly to bring them out of the place. And because this charisms function and he stewarded it in a proper way, giving always glory to God, he was able to use this charisms for the whole ministry and then pass away for his reward. So there is a scripture here, beautiful scripture in Daniel. Many of you all might have not recognized it. It, it speaks about the kingdom of God. Daniel chapter 2 verses 44. Two forty-four. Something beautiful is written that we should be all encouraged by it. Mm -hmm. 244. Daniel 244. And in the days of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that shall never be destroyed, nor shall this kingdom be left to another people. It shall crush all these kingdoms and bring them to an end, and it shall stand forever. I like the way you crush the other kingdoms, you know. Mm. <laughs> So you just, just try to meditate on this, think about the scripture. And in the days of those kings, the God of heaven 
will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed. Nor shall this kingdom be left to another people. It shall crush all these kingdoms and bring them to an end. And it shall stand forever. So we have to understand we are, we are in the kingdom which is to stand forever. And the charisms belongs to a kingdom which stands forever. All other kingdoms will be crushed. All other kingdoms will be crushed. And prophetically speaking, in the book of Revelation, uh, St. John is seeing that is where he is told that the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of God. So he was shown that the world has become the kingdom of God. The world has become the kingdom of God. So we have to understand that these gifts, these charisms and all belong to a kingdom that will not perish. That will crush all other kingdoms. It will crush all other kingdoms and only this kingdom will remain. That, that verse you find in Revelation chapter 11 verses 15. Revelation 11, 15. Chapter 11, then, verses 15. Then the seventh angel blew his trumpet and there were loud voices in heaven saying, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah and he will reign forever and ever. Then the seventh angel blew his trumpet and there was loud voices in heaven saying, the kingdom of of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord. So he was shown something about the future. The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah. So we are on the side of the winning side. Whose side we are? We are on the winning side. That we have to understand that we are in the winning side. The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah. And he will reign forever and ever. So this is something the Lord showed him. So we have to understand that we are the, the charism that we are using, the charism that we are receiving, the charism that we are desiring, they all belong to a kingdom that will crush all the kingdoms. And a time will come when you hear an announcement that is the seventh trumpet. What is the seventh trumpet? It's an announcement that the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. So we have to understand that we are, uh, these charisms belong to a kingdom that is going to crush all the kingdoms. So, uh, so the rolling, uh, rolling, uh, you know, see, after uh, the kingdom of God is uh, established on the earth, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And people will, uh, people will rule, is what it says. It's yeah. not that it's all going to heaven and become spirits. I think there is a, what, do you have some clarity on that, brother? No, actually, the, those people living at that time, I, I, I don't want to speak of that actually now. Uh, no, no, what I'm asking is, yeah. so what is going to rule? In a sense, during that time, okay, you know, the, the Bible says that uh, those uh, martyrs uh, will rule, right? Rule thousand yeah. years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the law in which they will rule will be the charism. Will it be the charisms? Is what I wanted. To, I'm asking. The law in which uh, the you know there has to be a law, right? Even now there is a law. In the in the coming world also there is a law. Yeah. yeah. Is that so that a, law will be the life in the spirit. Huh? That law will be the life in the spirit. Hmm. That God says, I will put a new spirit in you and, and take out the heart of flesh, heart of stone, and put a heart of flesh inside you. So that that the law will not be a written law. That will have that's happening even now, also, right? No, now it is happening with a lot of disturbances. Hmm. Now it is all the hearts are not ruled by God. Mm. All the hearts are not ruled by God. Every heart is not 
uh, worshipping the Lord. So that that is that is a time where it will, where the peace will rule the hearts of men. Okay. So that I do not go in detail because. Uh, so the only thing what I was trying to say is that we belong to a winning side, and these charisms uh, are, are are the tools to crush other other kingdoms. So God is is going to use His own people to crush the other kingdoms. So it will be the Holy Spirit working through us. So we see that in Matthew twenty four verses fourteen. Matthew 24. Yeah, right. Uh, Matthew 24, verse 14. Yeah, yeah. Mm, 14 says, And this good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. So we see here the word of the scripture is so beautiful here. And this good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the world as a testimony to all the nations and then the end will come. So the good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the world as a testimony to all the nations and then the end will come. So we see all this will be done by the power of the Holy Spirit. And this all will be done through the various charisms God will be giving to his people has been giving, is giving, will be giving to, to his people. So these things are all not toys. They are all powerful weapons to destroy and to build up. So that is why we have to learn how to steward these charisms. And the purpose is to set free from oppression of the devil and bring them to the love of Christ. That, that, that is the aim of every, uh, every, every, every move of the power of God is to bring to the, each one to the love of Christ. Deliver people from various oppressions. Various oppressions. And bring them to the love of Christ. That is the aim. That is the aim. So each one of us, who, who, we have to steward the charism in love. That is one thing that we have to remember. The definition of love is already found in the in, in the 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Definition of love is already found in the um, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. So these all have to be wrapped in love. The story in the charism must come out of love. Um, uh, Brother uh, Jose, I don't know whether you noticed or not. In some universities in uh, Kerala, uh, sorry, in uh, USA, uh, there is a move of God's spirit that started just a few days ago. Yes, I saw that uh, video. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in yeah. fact, uh, it has been it it went on for twenty six hours, thirty two hours, or something like that. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hundred hours, brother. Hundred hours. Hundred hours. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In Kentucky, Kentucky, USA. Ah, uh, in the cake. Yeah, I said that. I heard that. In fact, um, another good news which I read is uh, today is this uh, Atlanta airport, right? Atlanta airport, uh, yes. which I frequently go visit. They have uh, started a 24 hours uh, Blessed Sacrament adoration. Ah, okay. Praise God. No, in, in, the, in the airport. So, airport. so, uh, so you know, there are multiple, while there is, uh, you know, chaos, there is also some good news coming from different parts of the world. Yeah, yeah. Now, you see, uh, there, there, there is a move of God in one university and second university also. God's spirit started moving. Mm. And you know, but very interesting fact is when that um, person who was leading the class, it's a chapel actually in the university, he was teaching on love, the importance of forgiving others, helping those who hate you and all. Mm. And speaking those things and that the God's spirit moved very powerfully. Yeah. So that is why we, we have to understand that we have to wrap ourselves with the love of God when we are stewarding the charisms. Ah, very, very true. So this is something that we have to train ourselves consciously. 
the importance of walking in love and handling these gifts in love you see handling the people in love is so important because they are all from various backgrounds they are all from the people who are in need who will, who will be coming to you they will be of various backgrounds they might have committed adultery they might have committed murder they might have done lot of abortions you know and there may be people without faith and there may be people who have never prayed in their life no there are so many things uh, they may be having in their lives when they come to us when they come to us so we have to remember here that the, the charisms of the holy spirit have to be stewarded in the love of god now the definition of the love of god is already found in 1 corinthians chapter 13 in one of my talk in my own channel i have spoken about this uh, in 10 minutes i have spoken about this uh, 1 corinthians chapter 13 so uh, many have liked it and they told me that's a beautiful definition but paul had written had explained it if you have time you can see it so the definition is already found in 1 corinthians chapter 13 so people coming to us will be people who are alcoholic drug addicts you know you know one interesting fact is where it's very interesting so when you are anointed in a peculiar way according to your anointing people will come to you now if you have no love for sinners they are not going to come if you if you if you are having anointing for inner healing you will find lot of people coming to you have inner rooms if you have anointing to uh, loosen people from various bondages those kind of people will come so this all has to be handled in love you will find people falling you will people for falling in sin again and again you will find people you are praying for whom you might think not even worthy also so that is why we have to always handle with love that is why saint paul is saying in 1 corinthians chapter chapter 14 verses 1 you know that is the center part you know when he speaks on the charism in 12 then comes to 13 14 also he speaks so in the center part is telling uh, please read verses 1 make love your aim and earnestly desire the spiritual gifts yeah Espe- especially that you may prophesy yeah pursue love pursue love and strive for spiritual gifts so our aim has to be love and i i think i i like what uh, uh, louis montfort you know louis montfort saint louis montfort who wrote the book on uh, the one book called the secrets of the rosary in that he has mentioned about a, a about an army that god will raise up and this this people this people will be very powerful and not be anointed by the holy spirit prepared by mother mary also but there is something peculiar about these people they will they will they will do all the things in love when they leave the place they will live love there and do. so when they leave the place they will live love there and do. not hatredness for others uh, but love for others that is what prophetically uh, saint louis montfort uh, wrote i i'll just bring that quotation just just a minute it's there in one of my book and in speaking about this uh, in speaking about this army the saint said they will be like thunder clouds flying through the air at the slightest breath of the holy spirit that means they will be ready to move when the holy spirit slightest breath we are waiting for very loud voice to come but the lord but the holy spirit moves in us in a very soft and gentle way and these people will move at the slightest breath of the holy spirit attached to nothing surprised at nothing troubled at nothing they will shower down the rain of god's word and of eternal life they will thunder against sin they will storm against the world they will strike down the devil and his followers and for life and for death 
they will pierce through and through with the two edge sword of god's word all those against whom they are sent by almighty god they will be true apostles of the later times to whom the lord of hosts will give eloquence and strength to work wonders and carry off glorious spoils from his enemies they will sleep without gold or silver more important still without concern in the midst of other priests and ecclesiastics and clerics yet they will have the silver wings of dove enabling them to go wherever the holy spirit calls them fill as they are with resolve to seek the glory of god and the salvation of souls wherever they preach they will leave behind them nothing but the gold of love which is the fulfillment of the whole law wherever they preach they will leave behind them nothing but the gold of love which is the fulfillment of the whole law so wherever they preach they will leave behind them nothing but the gold of love so that is what we see here pursue love and strive for spiritual gifts like the sister read let your aim be love as you desire spiritual gifts and as you use the spiritual gifts love should be our aim and that is what why that is why we should be in the ministry because love is our aim anybody got any questions here Brother, that prophecy is so beautiful. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah, not yeah. heard of that before. It's very powerful, very powerful. Thank you for that. So I hope the Lord will use us also, as it's mentioned here. So is it fine? Did you understand about the importance of walking in love? The aim should be love. So I have a series of talk on love in that uh, YouTube channel. Uh, you can watch that. The series of uh, talk about ten talks. Every every talk about ten minutes, eight minutes, and all, and explaining about love. And I, I I'm not surprised. I took I I picked up a subject which many are not interested in. I picked up a subject to start off the channel. Uh, with the subject that many are not interested, I am so happy that the revival in the university, the move of the Holy Spirit started when they taught that you should pray for those who hurt you, you should help those who trouble you, and that is how God's Spirit moved in that uh, among the students there in that university. So, if you read one uh, Corinthians chapter thirteen, you can find the definition of love. Definition of love. It's not liking your own people, liking even those who don't like you. Yesterday, I don't know by mistake, somebody sent me one. Uh, not not by mistake. Everything is done by the plan of God. Somebody sent me one link of uh, Stephen Devesi. Stephen Devesi is the nephew of Stephen Devesi, the keyboardist, and he, this this boy is a very small boy. and he is a drummer he is a musician he is a music producer he sings and also his interview was there you know and they had brought another person also who is also in music so that man was suggesting something to this boy he told the boy that many will not agree with you they might oppose the things that you do and remember they are also your friends that that uh, that that person is telling many will try to criticize you that that is not that good this good so remember they are also your friends how many of us have taught this just because somebody disagree certain things we we don't look at that person face we don't want to think about them we don't want to be with them we don't want to work with them see what an advice from a secular person to a christian boy
So that is so when you want to see what is the definition of love, you can look into 1 Corinthians 13, 8 onwards, where you can see beautifully it's all mentioned here. Yeah, this one revelation I wanted to share. Uh, that is, uh, when the last season was going on, uh, in the part 19 and 20, so one girl, a, a child of God, God is preparing her for a great ministry. She got some revelation when she was watching this, uh, the 19th and the 20th of the ninth season. And some messages she has shared, I just want to share to you all. Because I always believe that, uh, and I always love to encourage those who are growing up, you know. So she sent some messages. I just want to share to you all. Number one, the Lord says, be still before the Lord and empty your thoughts before coming into his presence. Be still before the Lord and empty your thoughts before coming into his presence. And the second message she got up for all of us, please God and not others. Please God and not others. And the third message he got for us, God is raising his right hand and shining his colorful rays on the people watching the program. So whether, you are, whether it's YouTube or whether it's Zoom, the Lord is uh, blessing those. A colorful rays are coming into their life. Verses 4, sorry, the fourth one, fourth revelation. God is giving prophetic utterances to the people in the group. God is giving prophetic utterances to the people in the group. The fifth one, after giving the words of prophecy, always say, thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Then she has mentioned here that somebody had quoted Colossians 3.15. God is confirming that scripture to the, for the group. And, then Lord, and God is healing three persons of GERD disease. The spelling is G-E-R-D. GERD disease is an acidic reflex that, you know, the acidic, uh, the acidic, acidic content in the stomach and the top portion, they come up. So the Lord is healing three persons of that problem. Amen. And then and the next verse is that uh, the Holy Spirit is giving the verse to the group, Galatians chapter 5. Verses 16. Please, anybody can you can read it. Galatians 5, 16. Galatians 5, 16. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. Yeah. Then the, um, the bondages the Lord is going to break, that, that confirmation is there. And uh, this is the message she has sent. Um, yeah. And yesterday evening, uh, Annie, Annie from Sri Lanka also sent some messages. Uh, because of the power cut, she was not able to complete the program yesterday. And Annie, you are here? Annie, and Annie, Annie from Sri Lanka, are you here? Okay, so I'm just sharing that message. I don't think uh, she saw. And yeah, the message is that uh, the Lord is showing four candles. And when she prayed for interpretation, the Lord said, the four candles are four persons in the group trying to spread the light of Christ. And the Lord is blessing them. And the second one is, someone is driving a car and they're going to a theater. And the Lord is saying, be aware where you are going. Be aware where you are going. Then again, we find here, one more message. Somebody is drinking something with a straw. And the Lord is saying that what you are drinking is not healthy. What you are drinking is unhealthy. So this is the revelation that uh, Anne had sent. I thought she would be here today. So we have to always remember that when the, our aim should be love and we should pursue love. Preaching and teaching about love is very easy, you know. We have a lot of people teaching and preaching on love. A lot of people are preaching and teaching on love. They speak so beautiful things about love. That's all very nice. But on day-to-day -day life, 
in the ministry when people are not seeing when you are not known that is the time to manifest the love of god that has been poured into hearts and you know one beautiful scripture in the bible romans romans chapter chapter 5 Romans chapter five, verses five. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. That it that has been given to us. Yeah, and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. so we have god the holy spirit inside we have the love of god inside by the holy spirit so we have to come out of our selfishness change our mindset change our mindset change come out of our selfishness and have a real desire for people real desire for people. the one reason why we don't see powerful power gifts of the holy spirit working among us is because of lack of love lack of love so we have to change our mindset our mindset is trained to get angry to judge others to build a wall in our mind that's how our, our, we have built our mind you know and we have to change that mindset where we our aim is love and that we pursue love our aim is love and we pursue love that is should be our aim anybody got any question here about love that we should wrap ourselves as you handle this charisms the charism belongs to god who himself is love so humanly speaking these things are very difficult you know but when god's spirit is under control we will be we will be able to walk in love so allow the holy spirit to take control of you by praying to be filled with the holy spirit following his inspirations spending time in prayer And and getting ourselves filled with the Holy Spirit, so then you learn how. Then you have to change your mind. Some things we have to change ourselves. I think there's a beautiful scripture in uh, in Timothy. I think yeah, in two Timothy, I think yeah, two Tim two Timothy chapter two. Verses twenty and twenty-one. In a large house, there are utensils not only of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. Some for special use, some for ordinary. All who cleanse themselves of the things I have mentioned. will become special utensils dedicated and useful to the owner of the house ready for every good work and verses 22 also you can read let us not miss it shun youthful passions and pursue righteousness faith love and peace along with those who call on the lord from a pure heart so you see when before paul spoke about this he spoke few things you know uh, where we can see he talks about speaking he says remind them of this and warn them before god that they are to avoid wrangling over words which does not does no good but only ruins those who are listening so he's talking about lot of talking here lot of things he's talking about 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 speaking and then he says here in a large house there are utensils not only of gold and silver but also of wood and clay some for special use some for ordinary all who cleanse themselves of the things i have mentioned so who will do the cleansing yeah. who will do the cleansing all who cleanse themselves mm. so there are certain areas certain things god is waiting for us to cleanse ourselves there are certain areas where god is waiting for a god for us to do it they are simply going in the presence of god and crying again and again is not the solution 
It is where we can cleanse ourselves, we have to cleanse ourselves. And again, the Paul says, shun, your, shun youthful passions and pursue righteousness, pursue faith, pursue love, pursue peace, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. So, so we, we have to do so. Much. The, my, any, any, anything that is opposing the love of God in your life, to walk the, in love of God in your life, you have to cleanse it. You have to oppose it. This is All the time it won't happen naturally. But the Bible says those who cleanse themselves, purging has to be done from us also. Certain areas the Lord is waiting for you to do something about it. Not just simply just, just, just becoming lax and then just following something. I remember you were speaking about, about not enjoying prayer. Brother was speaking about it. I am the other day I was talking to a person from Arunachal Pradesh. So he was telling me that I don't enjoy praying. I said, why you have to enjoy praying? When you know the importance of praying, you start doing it. And then you will enjoy later on. The fruit of prayer you will enjoy. Why, why should we enjoy praying? When you know it's sometimes my housewives don't enjoy cooking, they don't enjoy washing clothes, they don't enjoy housekeeping, but they are doing all this. He needs a de dopamine detoxing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so get up and do it, then automatically that joy will come. So that is so we have to change our mindset that opposing walking in the love of God. And this mindset can come from past generation. If there are forefathers who have died in bitterness fighting against other brothers and all, this can follow. Then it can come from the odd that we have received in our mother's womb and it can also come from our past experiences. Other day in that, uh, I, I forgot one of the app, you know, with a lot of pictures they put. I don't know what is it. I forgot the name of the app now. Any theme you type, you get a lot of pictures. What is that app, brother? Which, which one? Uh, one Pin interest. Pin one, interest. One, Pin yeah. interest. Ah, pin interest. Yeah, pin interest. So in that, I was typing something spiritual. Sudden Lord pictures came. And one I saw, it is actually the secular world that speaks about healing of the inner child. Hmm. The traumas that you have gone through and uh, the difficulties. That so many things, four, five things are mentioned. Yeah, it's a secular people telling about the healing of the inner child. And we are still fighting uh, whether in learning is from God or not God. So we have to change our mindset and decide to walk, embrace the Holy Spirit, His revelations, and then walk, change the mindset to walk in the love of God. So remember this, so let's all pray and let God bless us as we continue to walk in the love of God, pursue, uh, pursue God, chase God, uh, but walk in love and decide the charisms to activate in us. And many times, you know, people have been praying for revival since so many years. And still, then I remember each time you pray, you think it's going to start tomorrow, it, it rolls off, you know. It's like something falling off from a mountain top, you know, rolls down. Each time you think. And then I used to wonder why. Then the Holy Spirit revealed to me, it's because not having love. Hmm. Lack of love among us. I remember the Lord showed a vision to a person. He said to me, I saw all the weapons. And the Lord told everything is ready. The harvest is ready. The weapons are ready. But the peop my people are not walking in love. Just imagine when the powerful gifts are given to you and you don't walk in love, what you are going to do with it? In fact, uh, okay. I will share the experience tomorrow. Uh, we will pray now. We don't have yeah. time. So let's all pray. Hallelujah. Everybody open your mouth. Let's, have a, uh, let's pray for the charisms. Let's pray to be filled. With the love of God, let's pray for our mindset to change. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 H
Let's be silent that you hear what the Lord is saying. The Holy Spirit is revealing that somebody here, it's a lady, that they stop criticizing your relatives. Stop criticizing your relatives, the Lord is saying. When you start doing that, and I see that when you start doing it as, you, as if you are sitting on the judgment seat, and when you criticize them, that is what actually is happening inside you. In your mind and all. So that is one thing that you have to forsake to follow Christ. And the Lord is asking some of us to pray for the healing of bitterness inside us. Any, 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 anybody want to share anything you can share? Very scriptures have come in your mind. Many scriptures have come. If any, any image has come, you can share. Any word of knowledge? The Lord is releasing his word into our life. His word into our life. This word comes, uh, love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength and all your might. And the Lord is revealing some of you all are lazy when it comes to prayer. Mm. So arise and pray. Shrug off the laziness. So we'll wind and we'll come back tomorrow. Until then, keep praying. If you got any word of knowledge or not, you can message to me. I will say it. Okay. Praise the Lord. God bless you. All. God bless you all. One minute. Yeah. I wanted to buy that prayer book. I'm Ramona here. Yeah, yeah. That you can contact my number. See, now I this don't is the have book. A... Yeah, yeah. This is the book, Holy Spirit, the Reality of His Presence. In this, actually, I have mentioned about the prophecy of St. Louis Montfort. If anybody has not read this book, it's very powerful. Get a copy. It's available in Amazon and read this book. And uh, for that uh, prayer book, you can contact me in my number we'll, and send the address. We'll send the book. Okay, then God bless you. God bless you. In the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.